Hello and welcome to another lesson on the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the Apostles. Today we have a long section that we're going to be looking at. It's all of chapter 22 and it's long but there's a lot of review in it because it's Paul's testimony to the Jews and so we're going to be looking at it we'll we'll hear a little bit of what it has to say and we're actually going to begin at verse 40 of chapter 21 and then all of chapter 22 so let's pray father as we hear these your words i pray that you would impress them upon our minds and upon our hearts i ask father that you would help us to understand your great love for us and your plan for us I pray, Father, that we would recognize who Jesus is, that he is your beloved son, and that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I pray, Father, that you would help us, like Paul, to be willing to affirm the name of Jesus Christ no matter what time of day, no matter where we are, no matter whether the message is popular or unpopular, Help us to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. So here we go. Um, the, the tribune, remember, um, gave Paul permission to speak to his people. And Paul, standing on the steps, motioned with his hand to the people. And when there was a great hush, he addressed them in the Hebrew language, saying, and so here's chapter 22. Brothers and fathers, hear the defense that I'll, I now make before you. And when he heard that he was, when they heard that he was addressing them in the Hebrew language, they became even more quiet. And he said, I am a Jew, born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up in this city, brought up here in Jerusalem, educated at the feet of Gamaliel, according to the strict manner of the law of our fathers. Gamaliel was one of the most important rabbis in Jerusalem in that day. Being zealous for God, as all of you are this day. And so Paul was trained as a Pharisee, trained to be zealous in the way of purity and the way of the law of the Jews. And then he says, um, I persecuted this way to the death binding and delivering to prison both men and women, as the high priest and the whole council of elders can bear me witness. From then I received from them I received letters to the brothers, and I journeyed toward Damascus to take those also who were there and bring them in bonds to Jerusalem to be punished. He was a strong advocate for the Jewish faith, and he was persecuting people of the way. Verse six. As I was on my way and drew near to, to Damascus about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me. And I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now, those who were with me saw the light, but did not understand the voice of the one speaking to me. And here I think Paul is in essence saying, you know, if you find them, they'll at least testify to this, to this much. There was a light and there was a, there was a sound out of it. Verse 10, and I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, rise and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all that is appointed for you to do. And since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, I was led by the hand by those who were with me and came into Damascus. There are witnesses who saw all this. Verse 12, And one Ananias, a devout man according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, notice, well spoken of by all the Jews, came to me and standing by me said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour, I received my sight and saw him. And he said, the God of our fathers appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one and to hear a voice from his mouth. 
for you will be a witness for him to everyone of what you have seen and heard. And now, why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. When I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that in one synagogue after another, I imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments of those who killed him. And he said to me, Go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Up to this word, they listened to him. As soon as he mentions the Gentiles, they get in an uproar. Then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. And as they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust in the air, the tribune ordered him to be brought into the barracks, saying that he should be examined by flogging to find out why they were shouting against him like this. But when they had stretched him out for the whips, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, Is it lawful for you to flog a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned? When the centurion heard this, he went to the tribune and said to him, What are you about to do for this man is a Roman citizen? So the tribune came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? And he said, Yes. The tribune answered, I bought my citizenship for a large sum. Paul said, but I am a citizen by birth. Those who, so those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately, and the tribune also was afraid, for he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen <coughs> and that he had bound him. But on the next day, <coughs> desiring to know the real reason, why he was being accused by the Jews. He unbound him and commanded the chief priests and all the council to meet, and he brought Paul down and set him before them. So that's the end of chapter 22, and we'll find out next time how that goes. But in this passage, we have a, a recitation of Paul's history. <clears throat> we hear again what Jesus had commanded for Paul to do, that he was to take the message to far away, I will send you far away to the Gentiles, that the Jews in Jerusalem weren't going to be willing to hear the message that he had for them. That persecuting Christians was actually persecuting Jesus Christ because they were followers of him. They were his disciples. And we see that Paul, Saul, is faithful in obeying his master. So we have these here. We also have the that Paul's not afraid to play the cards that he has. Um, he's about to be flogged and he says, whoa, <laughs> is it lawful for you to do this? I'm a Roman citizen and I haven't been condemned of anything. And no, the answer is it's not lawful. In fact, you notice that the um, the tribune and the centurion and those that had bound Paul were in fear because they had bound a Roman citizen without him being tried. That, that was punishable by death in and of itself. <laughs> so Paul's not afraid to play his cards when he has them. Now, he's still a prisoner and he's still in custody. The tribune just wants to find out what's going on. Why are the Jews so upset with him? What is the reason for all of the uproar? And Paul's going to have an opportunity to talk to them tomorrow. Well, talk to them um, in our next section, verse chapter 23. And we'll see how that goes next time. But what are we going to do with this um, for us today? First, remain steadfast in doing what God has called us to do. That, I think, is what Paul is trying to do. He's remaining steadfast to do what God has asked him to do. I think, too, 
it's important for us to realize that when we do what God wants us to do, sometimes it doesn't go well. Sometimes people don't like the message that we bring and they respond violently to it. That doesn't mean we're not following God's will. It means the people aren't receiving God's message. And it's really hard because we all like to be liked. <clears throat> and we all have this notion that if I do what God wants me to do, I'll be fine. And that notion is not necessarily true. It is true in the sense that we will be fine because we are taken care of by God. And even if we are persecuted, imprisoned, put to death, God still has us in his hands. So we're fine in that sense. But we can still be persecuted, imprisoned, and put to death. And I think it's really important for us to remember that. We live in the United States of America. Most of us who hear this are living here. Where persecution is mild, if ever. We're getting thrown in prison for our faith is not presently happening, not say it won't ever. And where death, because of what we believe, is unheard of, though that could change. And since it could, I think it's important for us to remember that faithfulness to God is more important than the response of the people. We simply are to be obedient to what God has called us to do, to do it faithfully and well. So I hope that's what you will do. Father, help me, help us, help all who hear this message, help all who see this chapter in Paul's life to realize that what you desire from us is that we faithfully follow you wherever that leads us that we are ob obedient to proclaim Jesus Christ as your son, our Lord and Savior, the one who died to pay the penalty for our sins, the one who rose from the dead and is now seated at your right hand. Help us, Father, to proclaim that good news to all people. And then, Lord, whatever the response may be, help us to trust you and to believe that you have us in the palm of your hand even when all hell is breaking loose in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, may you walk with Jesus in a way that brings glory to the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit today. And may you simply be faithful to him.